Episode 10, that's right, one zero. You have made it so far down your Archicad journey that today we're talking about the nitty gritty. We are talking about sections and sectional details. All right, let's dive right in to our section and our sectional details. First of all, what we wanna do is jump back to our ground floor plan and see what's happening. We can undo our trace reference so we don't have to see the extra bits and pieces. If you zoom out a little bit, you'll see just like our elevations, we have our sections on the left-hand side. Pick any of these sections. Let's grab section one, command D and move it across. Where you cut your section, completely up to you and it's all about construction details and construction information. For me, what's gonna be really important in this section will be potentially right here. By cutting through our window, our laundry bench, our laundry, our bathroom, our bedroom, and again, another window, we're gonna see a variety of different elements in the construction. So what we wanna do is either go to our section panel on the right-hand side to activate that section or right-click on that section and view this section. Personally, I'm just gonna double tap section one on the right-hand side. Now, just like elevations, you could change all of your settings for your sections. Personally, sections are about construction and construction information. I do not like having them colored. I also like to have uniform cut pen fills, have to say it slowly, on black as well. So let's do that, press okay, jump back to section. You see everywhere we've cut through is shown as black. If you've somehow stumbled upon episode 10 of this amazing journey, my name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia, and this is the completely free Archicad course. If you need help anywhere along this journey, make sure you jump onto the Discord chat down below. It's completely free. Otherwise, go back to episode one, start from the beginning, and find your way back to right here, right now, which is episode 10. First of all, when we're documenting sections, like I mentioned, it's all about structural information. So what do we want to represent? What do we want to showcase? And how do we want to detail it? Let's smash through this relatively quickly to give you guys as much information as humanly possible. First of all, you want to make sure that you're showing your boundary line and your natural ground level. So if I draw a straight line somewhere roughly here, turn that arrow head off, I then know that my boundary line is sitting below my slab. Depending on what kind of slab you have, it's most likely gonna be sitting a little bit above that slab as well. So let's go 50 minus. So the set down from the slab to the ground is 50 mil. You can detail all of this in 3D, obviously, or you can do it in 2D. For the purpose of this, we're just gonna grab some 2D fill. We're gonna go across to our drafting fill, change this to lightweight concrete, change our settings to black and white. This is gonna give us a white background and black for all of our hatching. What we then wanna do is start drawing our actual slab. So where it's cut across, we have a slab all the way across. I want my slab to be 100 millimeters thick, coming back, finishing that slab off. Here in Australia, slabs typically have edge thickenings as well. Slab thickening would look something like this and it would be a two by one ratio. So you'd have a slab thickening, something similar to what I've shown there. That then would be duplicated on the other side so we can mirror it, copy it, drag it to where it needs to be, use our magic wand tool to extend that hatch and delete what is not necessary. Generally speaking, we also have strip footings in Australia depending on what your soil conditions are. So let's do 500 by 300 as a strip footing and we'll also replicate on the other side. We need to showcase that all of this below the ground is earth. First of all, let's simply just draw a hatch. Let's bring it to the back of the image and let's change this to earth. I like my earth fill to be a lot lighter so you don't actually see it, you don't know what's going on and I also disregard the solid line. I do want my earth fill to be in front of the structure but I then want my actual slab to be in the front. So I'm gonna go through, select them all, bring it back to the front. Now we have one section talking about how the building connects to the ground which is critically important. We would then most likely have a vapor barrier. So as an example, we'll just grab a dashed line or a hidden line. Let's go small dashed. We'll use the blue and what we'll have is a vapor barrier. Now, the easiest way is to simply trace your slant, select one of the edges and offset that by about 50 mil. 
bring it to the front so it's clearly visible you have a vape barrier here. Depending on where you're building, who you're building with, how you're constructing, that vapor barrier may also wrap around the actual strip footing. So if you extend that 20 mil around the strip footing, you will then see a clear indication of a vapor barrier around a strip footing. Now, all of these are subject to structural engineering, your site, etc., etc. There's so many details that we aren't talking about in this section right here, right now. Generally speaking, there is a vapor barrier. There is probably some sort of insulation there might be individual thickenings throughout the slab to toughen up the slab, depending again on the soil classification. I've just noticed some shadows on my section. So jump back to ground floor plan, open up my settings, go to shadows and turn that off. You don't want shadows on your section. It is critical structural information. It is not anything for presentation purposes only. It needs to tell the structural story. Now let's imagine this was going to be a timber frame house. What would that entitle and what would we see? Well, first of all, we'd most likely see a very simple timber plate. So if we just get pure white box with an outline and we draw a timber plate at the bottom, it would be a 90 by 45 mil plate and we'd have a 10 mil offset for that plasterboard. And then of course, to indicate a timber plate here, we would have a simple X pattern. If this was a steel plate, it would be a C channel or a Z perlin or whatever it was that you were utilizing. And then we would also show where the rest of our plates go. If you want to get really technical, you might show a double plate at the bottom. You show a plate underneath your window sill. You show a plate at the top of your windows head and again at the top of your actual wall. Now next, what you'd show is most likely insulation in that wall. So if we find insulation, we can use bat insulation, change that to gray as well or change that to black now typically speaking sections are not at a 1 to 100 scale they are generally at 1 to 50 or larger so make sure you increase your sections and that way you can continue to move forward now this isn't a timber framing code or timber framing video at all but you'd most likely have some sort of header beam over the top of your window to carry the load support through the sides whatever was required under your framing code requirements. Same as a seal plate, you might beef it up, do whatever you need to do. Generally speaking, that's what our wall would look like and that's what we would be showcasing for the rest of these. I'll quickly go ahead and update all of these lower floor walls so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, to make sure I don't get a bunch of hate comments on this video as well, you can speed up this process by coming in to your section details changing from uniform to cut fill and making sure a uniform pen is selected. By doing so and coming back into our section, you'll see that the insulation is actually shown on these walls. So if I was to delete this ugly 2D hatch that I've created, you'll see the beautiful insulation actually shown. Whereas in the middle walls or the internal walls, you delete it and it's empty because there is typically no insulation besides acoustic insulation in these walls. Whereas external walls are specifically earth wall or something of those sorts. Continuing to move up the ranks, what you will see is a timber floor. Now this floor is 300 mil wide and it is a composite, so it does have a few layers to it. Very similar to what we've done for our walls is what would happen for this central floor. So first of all, we would have some form of ring beam. 270 by 65, timber stud on the outside now depending on which way your floor joists were going you could have these at 450 centers 600 centers whatever your engineer called for it personally i love 450 centers for a timber floor it makes it quite solid and doesn't feel bouncy whatsoever so it is much nicer to finish off a timber floor with 450 centers and then the odd one out is just joined to put insulation in, the easiest way is open up the object, use the insulation, drop it in, rotate it, and adjust it to the right size that you need. Now to make your insulation fall to the back and your beams actually stand through, you would obviously just make that insulation a lighter color and push it to the back. Now we have some sort of timber floorboard here. We have nothing wrapping underneath, so we would have to showcase that via our clean fill so what we could do is introduce a 10 millimeter fill and bring that to the front as pure black 
and then we could also extend that edge another 10 millimeters forward there showcase the edge of our timber floor was wrapped around it was concealed with whatever cladding we had and we would simply move the wall above it to align 10 mil and then we could extend our cladding all the way up and by showcasing that right there you would indicate that this cladding goes down past your edge slab edge and then you'd have a different material returning to the end obviously even at 150 that is quite hard to see it is nearly impossible to see so what you'd have to do is a section detail that can be easily achieved by using your detail tool here on the left hand side if you select the detail tool start drawing a basic square try align it to only the information you want to showcase because it will make a 2d carbon copy of this area for me i like that shape there i'm going to click over here and it's going to tell me that this id is on this layer now once you create details you'll find them appear in the details section so if you double click the detail you will see that detail be blown up to 1 to 25 or 1 to 10 or whatever you decide to make it then utilizing this much larger detail will print obviously much larger you can go through and detail this with impeccable accuracy you can showcase exactly the size of your studs you can showcase your skirtings, your plasterboard, how it aligns, how the floorboard comes in underneath that skirting, where that particle board stops, how this ring beam is bolted to the side, what kind of cleats you're using, much, much, much more. Throughout a residential project, you may have 20 to 50 to 100 of these details, depending on how much information and how much in architectural input you wish to place on the project. The upper walls would be identical to the lower floor walls and you would go ahead and duplicate the same kind of system. Obviously the walls would stop at the underside of the beam or depending on how your carpenter wished to brace them it could actually extend a little bit further and then be braced in between the actual rafters. But for the purposes of this that is one long rafter with some tin on top and then again we'll place some insulation align it to our rafters for basing and sizing and away we go we have our section well detailed well informed and as we progress we add more and more and more the last thing you may want to consider in this section is actually how we protect the top of the roof so let's grab one of these timber studs drag it to the top of this parapet here in the timber wall what would happen in this scenario is basically the corrugated tin that is sitting on top right here would have a flashing. That flashing would be cut into the corrugated tin. It would then reverse back two, three, four, five hundred mil, depending on the weather and the regions. It'd be pushed all the way up that wall, returned, pressed over our actual top of wall, returned down back, and then it would either flick a little tiny bit with a silicon bead or wrap around and interlock into the cladding system itself either way your flashing up the top i'll just change the color for clarity would protect the top of the wall from any weather and any water in a section typically you wouldn't showcase any of the fixed furniture so if i was to go in turn my fixed furniture off we would hide all of that you can show your plumbing fixtures if you want just simply change those to a different color so they aren't pink and drive you crazy. To take this one step further and really think about our construction and our detailing, these wet areas, as well as this wet area up the top, would most likely be tiled, which means they would most likely be set down to allow for the screed and the tiling to actually be utilized in these rooms. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, what we would do is let's just align these hotspots. If we set this slab down 30 millimeters, we would then also set this section of the slab down 30 millimeters and allow a two to one change in the grade between the bottom of the slab. What you'd see then is approximately 20 millimeters of screed. So let's make that yellow for clarity, which will allow you to manipulate the uneven levels of the concrete and provide a perfectly level surface for your tiles to go on. And then last but not least, you would have 10 millimeters of tiles, which I'll make black for the purposes of argument on top of that screed. Now, this wall here, you would either 
make sure that the concrete is stepped up with a little bunding plate in between the walls so that your screed creates a natural barrier between and you only have to waterproof up the walls, not underneath. Or you could run it underneath and do a completely different waterproofing detail. Nonetheless, that is the core and most important elements of a structural section. You really need to focus on the details, the elements. Zoom right in to every little bit. Think about every little connection point, how it's going to work, what's going to happen. Do we need to showcase the bolt coming through this bottom plate? Do we need to show the insulation on the side, which then results in our footings having to move to the right-hand side and being dropped? Do we need to show all the Rio? Do we need to show the chairs? Do we need to show any hydronic in slab heating? Are we going to show a drop ceiling in our bathroom? Potentially, we want to take some of these, potentially we want to take some of these timber studs, drop them, 300 millimeters and create a false ceiling for ourselves because we might find that we need this extra space for mechanical ventilation for additional lighting for heating for all sorts of things so this is where we detail how our ceiling heights are where they go and what they need to be anyway that's all for me team thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did smash the subscribe button down below the full arcade course is to the playlist beside of me and like always i'll see you next monday